help find the baby Saurians? And I'm Toba. You must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Uh, it's nice to meet you too, but we're just passing through. No, oh, but Uncle Sanka said he was going to send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? Yeah, sorry. Whatever this is about, it sounds like you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? Darn it! We've been tricked, Toonie. I should have known that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are we supposed to do about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It's okay, Hoonie. Don't worry. Why don't you tell us what happened with these baby Saurians, huh? There's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad Saurian got injured. Her name's Nana, and she has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. I'm really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. If Nana is your dad Saurian, why isn't he the one looking for them? My dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for Turnfire Night. It's a really important ceremony. More important than this, anyway. I'm not supposed to be out here either, but I snuck out without telling him. I didn't think it would take very long, but then that guy we ran into made us tell him loads of stories, and it wasted so much time. Yeah, he was so selfish. He doesn't have a heart. It's all right. Don't let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you because we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? They should be. I already managed to find their tracks and it seems like they're hiding on the cliff. Really? Wow! Thank you so much, Miss Traveler and Miss Paimon. Awesome! You gotta be careful out on the cliffs, though. They're really steep. Even grown-ups have trouble climbing them. Goody said the baby Saurians are on the cliff, so let's find a way up! If it isn't the gruesome twosome who wormed their way into our servant circle of friends. <laughs> Still awestruck from the last time we met? Would that be why you hastily scrambled up here to pay your respects the moment you saw us? <laughs> I suppose we can't blame you. Such is the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. Very well. You heathens leave us no choice. <laughs> the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahulahau, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Come, pucker up. You may now kiss our feet. Wait, aren't you like, Kanichi's sidekick? What the heck are you going on about? You're somehow managing to be even more annoying than the last time we met. Silence! Who are you calling sidekick? We are the Dragon Supreme, Sovereign Ruler of the Nation of Flame. We shall have you know that last time, were it not for Kanichi's earnest pleading on your behalf, you would have received not a single word of mercy. Oh, come on. You talk big, but Kanichi clearly has you under lock and key. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's more like it. If you must know, our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hoitzitlan, and we chose to grant his request. Abyss incident? See this little lizard? Its mother, a medium-sized lizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then assailed her own offspring. Yikes. So how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the abyss. Naturally, she has departed for the Night Kingdom. <laughs> Such a fragile creature. Apparently, she ended her struggle by leaping from a cliff. Leaping from a cliff? My dear anemic flying ant, as addled with questions as your head may be, please keep them to yourself and wipe that absurd expression off your face. We are the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How, not a wish-granting fountain. Anemic flying ant! Yoot! Just you wait, two can play at the ugly nickname game. Hmm, we sense a faint abyssal energy. <laughs> An evil sorcerer must be lurking nearby, but they are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? Ha! <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen! You're just lucky that our servant has such vile taste in friends! Otherwise, we would beat you black and blue, and then purple, then black again! <laughs> if you're not here to kiss my feet, then get out of my sight. Do not impede the work of the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How! Potty mouth on that guy! Paimon is furious! Still, good to know about the abyss threat, huh? Wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's not get sidetracked. You're back already? That was so fast. Uh, I'm so glad that the babies are all right. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome. Pizza cake! You're not from Natland, right? Because your clothes look different than ours. Oh. Hey, you must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest at my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big Scions at the Canopy welcome! We love having guests, and you're really nice people. Not like Glasses Guy. By the sound of it, Glasses Guy wasn't from Natlan either, right? Uh-huh. Well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there was something really fishy about him. Really? Maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Ahal mentioned. Sure, if you're interested. Oh, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Oh, please, mister. I've told you so many stories already. When are you gonna help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story. One more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. Oh, you mean turn fire. That's where the ancient name Mollipo comes from. Oh, wow. So it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh-huh. There's a story behind every ancient name. The legend goes that the Turnfire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tyrant Oj Khan to rule over Natlan and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turnfire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, you'll feel a horrible burning pain from behind you, but you won't die from it right away. And whatever you do, you mustn't turn back to look at it. Why? 
what happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around, poof! You get burned to a crisp. Well, good golly gee. I mean, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people alive? That is a big no-no in my book. Right? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Ochkon really was an evil tyrant. Yes, shocking behavior. Now, let me guess. Eventually, a valiant hero came to save the day? That's usually how these stories go. Good guess, Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero was called Yuponki. He's the ancestor of our tribe. Mm-hmm. Yuponki was friends with Ochkon the Tyrant, and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Archon. He was working as an ordnance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. He didn't like how Ochkon was such a cruel tyrant, so he stole the Turnfire and threw it at the Ochkon's army. The soldiers couldn't defend against it, and they all got turned to ash. And that's how our ancestors set our people free. But just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Oj Khan calling out to him from behind. It caught him off guard, and he turned around to look. But Oj Khan wasn't there. All he saw was a city burn black, an army in ruins, and giant flames reaching up into the sky. A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was burned to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turn fire, or the price of turning back? Nobody knows the answer. But the fire that consumed you, Punky, burned more fiercely than any other. It burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. And then, the flame dropped into the deathly dark night kingdom, where it still burns to this day. The grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life. But for the dead to be reborn, they have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. It's like a final look back at your life, where you have to answer for everything you did. Anyway, that's the story of Yuponki's turn fire. Ah, a fine parable indeed. So, is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? I don't know. I think it's just a story. Either way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since? Sure has. It went to Burkina, the hero that we celebrate on Turnfire Night. But that was 500 years ago. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kinich. So we often call him Malipo Kinich. Kinich, huh? All right, Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. Now, can you please go find the baby Saurians for us like you promised? Uh, I would. But doesn't the legend of the Turnfire teach us not to look back? Let's not go dredging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear. Starting now. No? Careful, Toba. You look dangerously close to cursing me out right now. Tut tut. We can't have that. Cursing is for grown-ups only. Uncle, you'd better not be trying to trick us, or the Turnfire will get you when you die. How would it get me if I'm outside of Natlan? Uncle Glasses isn't from here, you know, unlike you. Huh? Wait, is that? All right, kiddos. I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on their way here, and, uh, yeah, they'll help you out on my behalf. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? We met at the foot of this cliff, so beneath the peaks, let's go with Sanka. Seriously? 
seriously? If you don't believe me, turn around and see for yourselves. They're right behind you. Huh? Where? Oh, wait! Uncle Sonka! Where did you go? Yeah, definitely a fishy character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us too. He'll pay for this. All he got out of us was some stories, though. What's the worst that could happen? Hmm. Traveler, maybe we should go tell Kanich about this. Ahau says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a loose cannon. We probably shouldn't take him at his word. Huh? You know Kanich? Um, not very well, but we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Aw, oh, man. I'm so jealous. I never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's the Saurian Hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because of that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Oh, the creep who calls himself Kahul Ahau? Yeah, we've had the... pleasure of meeting him, too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. Exactly! I don't know why Kenich partnered up with him. Why didn't he pick me instead? Uh-oh! Oh. Huni, look how late it is! We've been out way too long. We better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Oh, yikes. You're right. Okay, well, this path here leads to our settlement. If you decide to visit, remember to come to my house. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon. We gotta run. Bye for now. What were you thinking, going out by yourself? Don't you know how dangerous it is? It's okay, Toba helped me, and we met some kind strangers who helped us, and... Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were so kind, huh? Oh, I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads? Uh, yeah, actually, they did, in big, bold letters. Don't talk back to me. The Mountain King problem still hasn't been solved. What would I do if I lost you too? No dinner for you tonight. They were good people, Dad. Dinner or no dinner. Hello again, Hoonie. Uh, it's Miss Paimon and Miss Traveler. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me. And I promised we'd take care of them if they came to visit. Oh, 
So you're the kind strangers. Well, I'm Trinidad. Apparently, you helped my daughter today, so if there's anything you need, just ask. As an elder of the Scions of the Canopy, I've got some influence around here. Now, I trust that you're sensible people who know better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. Yep, just helping a neighbor. We're not looking for anything in return. Oh? Well, let's hope so. Dad, please! They're not bad people! They've eaten at the same table with Kanich before! Be nice to them! Kanich? Wait! I heard that two mysterious travelers from afar showed up at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Are they... you? And Paimon's the other! Uh... <coughs> uh... I, I do apologize. A lot's been going on in our tribe lately, and I suppose the pressure must be getting to me. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I was so rude to you. I, I uh... I feel ashamed. Uh, we got off on the wrong foot. Can we, uh, start over? Oh, now we're talking. Seriously, though, don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see Hooney got home safe and sound. Oh, you just arrived, I take it. And, and it would be my honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Careful now. That's quite an about face. We've heard that kind of thing can lead to spontaneous combustion around these parts. <coughs> uh. <laughs> My dear traveler, you are very perceptive indeed. Go inside now, Hooney. Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay. Look after Miss Traveler and Miss Paimon. They're very special guests. Well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises that we'll be able to help. <clears throat> well, this is a matter of utmost importance. Please, uh, allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the Turnfire Night. It is a traditional ceremony among the Scions of the Canopy in which we remember our ancestor, Burkina, and his companion, Kangamato, the Mountain King. Burkina was a hero who bore the ancient name Malipo, and Kangamato was a powerful Yumkasur warrior. Together, they fought against the Abyss. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Burkina paid with his life. The Mountain King survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. Normally, Yumkasors never live longer than a century. It is possible that the Abyssal Power is responsible for his unnaturally long lifespan. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The Abyssal Power inside him is highly sensitive, and when it is disturbed, he awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. So, besides the ceremony, another important part of Turnfire Night each year is cleansing the Abyssal Power inside the Mountain King so that he will remain sound asleep. However, Abyss-related incidents have been on the rise in that land lately, as I'm sure you're both aware. As a result, it has become increasingly difficult to keep the Mountain King in hibernation. Only five months have passed since the last Turnfire Night, and he's already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has. We managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away, but it was a close call. He could reawaken at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion, Nana, during the ceremony. She became contaminated by the Abyss as a result, and... We heard. Such a tragedy. We're really sorry for your loss. Ah, uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional Turnfire Night ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer. From what I've heard about your adventures, I believe you would be perfect for the role. Of course, 
Plus, he's a bona fide hero who inherited the Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kanich? Yes, he's the one. A hero worth his weight in gold. And unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prizes for guessing what he said when I asked him to host a Turnfire Night outside of the annual schedule. An exceptional ceremony? Oh, I'll have to charge an exceptional prize. I swear, no other concept exists in that boy's brain. I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs, but I'm convinced the Wyub got hit on the head and took a wrong turn the day it chose to give that ancient name to him. I mean, have you ever heard of a hero whose mantra is, what's your asking price? Oh, and don't get me started on that insufferable a how he hangs around with. <sighs> Thinks he's God's gift to mankind. Pompous fool. Yeah, Paimon has to agree on that last part. <sighs> anyway, the fact is, the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as we can find someone else. And besides, you two seem like much better candidates. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Well, there's only a few days left before the ceremony. We can't afford to waste what little time we have on negotiating with him. No, I much prefer if you would consider taking his place. Wonderful! I can't thank you enough. Hooney was right about you. You have kindness in your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain. I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. Us experienced warriors, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. insult the great Kahul Ahau behind his back! Oh, great Kahul Ahau, bless you! Shut your filthy mouth, worm of the abyss! Your putrid words defile the air we breathe! You make the almighty dragon lord, Kahul Ahau, sick to the stomach! Speaking as a member of the Abyss Order, that's music to my ears. Exactly the kind of reaction we're going for. But, on a personal level, I gotta say, it's pretty hurtful. Ugh, never have we heard such brazen blustering from someone who is inches from death! Up yours, four eyes! We spit in your face! <laughs> okay, well, that I am at a loss to explain. How do I manage to stay so chirpy and cheerful? I can only guess it's some kind of powerful magic. But, I digress. Mr. Kinich, I admit it, you, sir, are a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. You see, I'm very interested in the lore of your tribe. K. Is that it? K. Aren't you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the Abyss? It's the extreme sports! The other day, I narrowly avoided getting hit by a very brave soul who just leaped off a cliff. I think you call it bungee jumping? Anyway, I was very impressed. That is what I call embracing the spirit of adventure. Look, I even did a painting inspired by the bravery and freedom of the scions of the canopy. You scum-sucking swine! Ugh, I swear, if you go bungee jumping, it'll be without a rope! Head first off the tallest cliff, with a band of hunters on your tail, and nowhere left to run! And a bottomless cesspit waiting for you on the ground! You say that, but I get the sense that Mr. Kinich isn't planning to take my life right now. On top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar. So why don't we just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. What do you say, Mr. Kinich? <laughs> or you could tell me what it is you're really after. What? And then I'll name my price.
An insurmountable problem, I presume. Anesthetics? The abyss contamination is back. No surprises there. No doubt that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. See those torches over there? Those are the Sacred Flame offshoots that we requested from the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. They contain the power of the Pyro Archon. Are you saying that the Sacred Flame and the Turnfire are the same thing? Well, for ceremonial purposes, at least. Sending someone to the Night Kingdom to retrieve the legendary Turnfire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the Sacred Flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why we use it in the ceremony. Gotcha! So basically, we just need to clean up the filth with the Sacred Flame. Well, that's one part of it, yes, but the complete ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. First, the flame bearer must collect a kindling of the sacred flame from the starting point, then use a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the sacred flame pillars. Then, they must go down into the canyon, all the way into the cave where the mountain king slumbers, lighting braziers and the final altar along the way. The most skilled flame bearers can accomplish all of this without touching the ground once. As much as I hate to admit it, Kanich is capable of this. Wow! He can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground? Well, of course Paimon can! It'd be much harder for you guys! <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not a requirement of the ceremony. You're allowed to touch the ground. The only thing you're not allowed to do is turn back. The flame bearer must always keep moving forward. You can't skip a pillar, then come back to it after lighting the next one. To do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So, what actually happens if you do turn back? Surely the fires don't just go out. Um, well, uh, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today, then? Does the same rule apply? Oh, no. Don't worry. Today is just a practice. The order doesn't matter. You just need to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, then go light all the braziers. Are you ready? I'll repeat all the key points again. Gather the kindling, cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end.
can't be all the braziers. Let's regroup with Trinidad. I knew I was right about you. You have outperformed all of the other previous candidates. If there was an ancient name for outstanding flame bearers, <laughs> I'm sure the Wyab would consider you for the honor. <sighs> All right, now there's still a few days left until the ceremony, and I should probably get back so I can inform the chief and the other elders that I have found the flame bearer we need. Oh, you mean they've still got to sign off on it? Some of them are still hoping we can come to an agreement with Kanich, but that's only because they haven't seen you in action. Still, hmm, I'm the one responsible for securing a flame bearer, and my recommendation is you. Um, just for Paimon's own peace of mind, are you sure it's not going to be a problem having Outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? See that place over there? There was a time, long before the age of Burkina and the Mountain King, when we, Scions of the Canopy, called that our home. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now, it has become a place where our youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. If we fail to keep the threat posed by the Mountain King at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. So, to answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. Fair enough. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll need you to drop by my place at some point before the ceremony, if that's all right. There are still a few final details that we need to discuss. Okay, see you later then! You have my gratitude. We've helped out with a lot of other local festivals before, but this one feels a little... different. Anyway, let's take a break before heading back to Trinidad's place. <laughs> 